Good day, listeners and viewers. Welcome to this edition of the Pure Sex Radio program. We're so glad to have you with us. My name is Jonathan, and I actually have a, uh, a friend from actually just up the road from us. I've got, got uh, We've got Dr. Carol Peters-Tanksley with us. And so, Carol, welcome to the program. Oh, it's awesome to be with you, Jonathan. I love the title of your program, Pure Sex Radio. It, it just puts people in the right frame of mind right from the start. Well, it's interesting because we were... You know, some people have the other reaction when they see that and they're like, why did you name your program Pure Sex Radio? And and there's a little bit of a strategy to it, because over the years, there have been a lot of people that have gotten connected with our ministry, but not because they were looking for our ministry. Uh, they were on the Web looking for other things. And thankfully, yes. our our program pops up because of that name. So. Um, but Dr. Carroll, I would love for our listeners to just be able to hear from you a little bit about kind of what's your background and, and how did you get into this space of ministry and, and maybe share a little bit about what you're doing in ministry? Mm, thanks. Uh, I think God has a great uh, chuckle when uh, he thinks of me. I think it is incredibly ironic that I am talking about that, this here. I grew up in a Christian home. I went to medical school, became an OBGYN physician, in part because I never wanted to have anything to do with men. I never wanted to touch men. I just, that, you know, OBGYN, I could concentrate on women. Uh, I was not married uh, until my 40s. When God brought my husband into my life, I was in the process of finishing my theology training. That was something that God brought in some ways out of the blue. Now, looking back, I, I can see what he did. Uh, but, but I had gone through theology training and medicine and ministry together. And about the time I was finishing that, God brought my husband into my life. We had a very blessed marriage. I started writing a bit. And I put out a couple articles about what to do when your husband doesn't want to have sex with you, what to do when your wife doesn't want to have sex with you. And still to this day, that's been several years now, those are among the top articles that people come to our resources for. I start, I, I put up an article about pornography and masturbation and oh my. So when people started seeing these kinds of topics addressed, they just they just started coming more and more. And today I have people coming to our resources literally every single day for those topics, married, single, men, women, younger, older, from across the country and around the world. It's because people are people are hungry. People have experienced the the, the brokenness in this area and they're hungry for something that is that is positive, some way to go forward. And, and Jesus has that. Yeah. So what I would love for us to unpack is um, uh, I'd love for you to share kind of what is God's design for sexuality. And then then we can talk about how that's broken and then why there's such an importance in people being able to share the full story of their oh, sexual yes. brokenness in order to be able to enter ultimately into a healing journey of being able to kind of reclaim what has been broken uh, in God's design for sexuality. So why don't you share with us what God's design is for sex? Oh, yes. God in himself is a relational being. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are so close, they are so intimate, and I believe that is the correct word, that we are told to think of them as one God. And he is, but there are no barriers between them. God is love, love is relational. That is his character. And so when God wanted a family, when he created human beings in his image, we, men, women, every human being who's ever been born on this earth is created with the need, desire, and capacity for intimacy. That is part of how we are created in the image of God. One of the things that <clears throat> very quickly happened when sin came is intimacy was broken. And w when I'm talking about intimacy here, it certainly is related to sex. But I, I do want to also talk about that intimacy and sex are not identical. There is an overlap. 
Uh, certainly, every one of us as humans is created as a sexual being because that is related to the intimacy way in which we are made like God. When Genesis, uh, at the end of the creation story, at the end of Genesis 2, and it says the man and the woman were naked and unashamed. Naked certainly means no clothes on their bodies. But the Hebrew there is very picturesque. It's a whole lot more than just no clothes on their bodies. There was nothing between them emotionally or spiritually, as well as nothing between them physically and no shame. Who have any of us have experienced being naked and unashamed, mm -hmm. not only physically, but, but emotionally and spiritually. And that picture of intimacy in totality is what God designed. You cannot experience intimacy by taking the clothes off your body alone. The only way to experience what God designed you for is that the clothes are off your heart. It, it, it's not nearly so much about behaviors as body parts or relationship status or biology or, or physical acts, although those are real. Um, but it's it's much more about matters of the heart. And, and that's why I believe so many of us have gotten a skewed idea when we get off into the, the behavior parts and we get hooked on behaviors or broken behaviors or, or whatever. And it's the heart matters that are, are driving all of that. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit because I believe there's actually, especially a lot of Christians, um, that we get, we can get very much focused on where the behavioral lines are around sexuality, but miss the fact that the original design, even in terms of God bringing Adam and Eve together and forming this marriage covenant and the, the sexual union that goes on within that, but that was uh, created to be this metaphor, to be this picture of, I think, oh, yes. what, what you're talking about. So can you help us understand why you think it is that we tend to get distracted with the focusing on the behaviors and not actually fully understanding what the metaphor is meant to express or, or reveal to us? In part, it's an outworking of our humanness, but I believe this is a great ploy of the enemy. Uh, he loves to mar what God created as beautiful, the whole sexual picture being a metaphor of what God has within himself and what he desires with us. It's, it's not that we are told to, to think of God as, uh, you know, trying to picture what, what we have and want and desire. It's the other way around. We are made in his image. He's not made in our image. Mm -hmm. So the, the relational aspect of who God is and the relationship he desires with us, our sexual union in marriage uh, has to be within covenant. Sex, intimacy, and marriage, uh, covenant, a threefold cord. Uh, and God knows in our world, those things have been so completely separated uh, everybody listening or watching now, I'm sure you know that sex can exist without intimacy. Sex can exist without marriage. There are plenty of marriages where there is no intimacy happening, whether or not sex is happening. And for the single people, the unmarried people, here's the, the same principle. Jesus as a single human being, a fully alive male uh, it, person with all the sexual drives, the biology, the hormones and whatever, lived fully alive and he never had sex. Mm -hmm. He never was married. What does that say about intimacy? I believe Jesus needed intimacy when he was here, just like each of us do. And all of us have to learn to pursue intimacy, whether we're married or not married. That was a, that was a challenge for me before I got married. Then I had the experience of, of marriage, a, a loving relationship with my husband, including a healthy sex life. And now since he's passed away and gone home to be with the Lord, I am having to pursue intimacy in, a, in other ways again. Um, when we get off onto the behavior things, first of all, I believe the enemy loves to to hook us because he knows how powerful those brain chemicals and, and pathways are. And in the church, by and large, thankfully, Jonathan, your work and, the, and that of, of others is starting to change this. But 
in the church, the standard story for too long was all about do's and don'ts, uh, sin and what you can get away with. Jesus, when he was here on earth, whether it was about sex or anything else, didn't talk nearly as much about right and wrong as he did about life and death. Mm -hmm. I talk to uh, men and women and, and couples who, who are wrestling with trying to figure out the behaviors and the matters of the heart uh, just keep pulling them in destructive and sad ways, whether or not they're living uh, sexually pure, behaviorally or not. Mm -hmm. Jesus always came to matters of the heart. When he talked, for example, with the woman at the well in Samaria, he always dealt with sexual issues with as much grace and truth as he dealt with, with any others. And he is offering that woman living water. And she says, give me this water. I, I'm thirsty. I want it. Jesus says, call your husband. She replies, I don't have one. I, I, I don't have one. Jesus said, you're right. You've had five husbands and the person you're with now is not your husband. And just a few minutes later, the woman goes running back into town telling everybody she meets, come meet the man who told me everything I ever did. Jesus did not give her a life flash before my eyes a video in her head. He put his finger on the issue. It was not a condemnation way of dealing with it. He got under the surface. He talked about, he, he got to her heart. Mm -hmm. And it was as if in 21st century English, he was saying, here, I see you. I know what's going on. Let's deal with this. Yeah, I love what you're saying, because I think, you know, especially in that scenario with that uh, Samaritan woman, um, he was exposing what, the idolatry in her heart. Right. Because I think yes. you're right. It, part of the, the power of God's design, even with within our sexuality is meant to cause us to realize that we we are not made to be isolated, separated people. Yeah. Like even those desires and drives that you put, it's in us. What happens when a kid turns 13, 14, 15, and all of a sudden, you know, this, these, this other creature that they couldn't yes. stand to be around all of a sudden starts looking attractive and they go, yeah. I may want to move towards that person. You know, <laughs> that's God's design to say you were made for yeah. community. You were made for intimacy. Um, but I think the way sin comes in, like you're talking about, and especially with that illustration of the Samaritan woman is because we are designed for intimacy, because we're designed for community and ultimately we're designed for all of those needs to be met in in God, our hearts though can get so distracted with all these other things. Now, rather than us going through just an entire list of all of the ways in which um, God's design has been distorted and broken, could you maybe just share a little bit of your own story in terms of, of how this has looked in your own life and kind of the journey that you have been on of understanding what does it mean to live into the the wholeness and the goodness of what God has created, even within your own person. Yeah. Uh, thank you. In one sense, I did things right. I did not have sex before I got married. In a much deeper and larger sense, I did things very wrong. I grew up with that standard church picture, you know, sex is sinful outside of marriage. And yet I had no full understanding of what was going on in my own heart and uh, relationships and what intimacy meant and what was going on in my own heart was very very broken that's how i found myself alone with a married man in a hotel room i won't say the year and i won't say the city this this is not to to talk about him but this was a ministry leader mm. uh he was married he had kids and I find myself in a hotel room alone with him to pray. It was only by the grace of God that my clothes did not come off. But that experience rocked me. It, it, it kind of uh, uncovered 
my own lack of understanding. I had seen the red flags. I had felt the red flags in my own soul. Mm. Why did I ignore them? What was it that led me to get that close to something I would never do? And I, I, I want to be very clear. My not having intercourse before marriage was not some virtue virtue on my part. Um, it was it was just an outgrowth of my lack of understanding human relationships. And then I find myself here in this in, in this hotel room. So I had to start looking at my own story, including my own sexual story. What were the holes in my heart that had never been filled? What were the wounds that I had experienced and that I had tried to, to cover over? What were the distorted and frankly wrong messages about sex and intimacy and relationships that I had bought into? Mm -hmm. And frankly, that is not a comfortable thing to do, to look at your story, in particular your sexual story. And I am 100% convinced that if I had not done that before God brought my husband into my life, I would not have been able to have a healthy relationship. I'm frankly grateful that I did look at that because by dealing with my stuff before getting married, there was a significant amount of pain that I didn't have to experience or that my husband didn't have to experience because I, I had uh, grown through that yet. So I, I'm saying that because I believe these principles apply whether you're, um, uh, quotes, a virgin mm -hmm. or you've been acting out so much. I think it applies whether you hate sex or are addicted to sex, regardless of how you play in which brand of brokenness, these principles apply. Yeah, and I love what you're saying because I think part of the the fallacy in our thinking of getting so focused on where the lines of behavior are is that we don't even recognize that the whole time God is whispering to us, you're using the wrong scorecard. <laughs> like you're thinking it's all about, you think it's about whether or not I've crossed this particular line or not. And what you're saying, and I love about what you're sharing in your story is, hey, according to let's say the purity narrative scorecard, man, you were, you were getting A plus. But in terms- I, I made it. You know, I, I, right. I, I made it to the altar. <laughs> but in terms yeah. of, of then, you know, I often think of then how did Jesus approach all of the religious leaders that had their scorecard with their A pluses on yep. it because they're yep. doing the letter of the law. And he was just nailing them and saying, you're missing the heart of the law. You're missing what I'm actually after, what, what the God of the universe is actually after. It's not perfect behavior. It's he wants an intimate relationship with you as a person made in his image. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, you shared a little bit of your story. One of our core values at our ministry is story. Can you talk about why it is so important that even in understanding God's design and then understanding how we're all broken in some way from that design, why is it important that a person dig into their story or, or share their story in order for them to actually experience healing and, and maturity in this area? Yeah, I am so blessed by what I know of your ministry, Jonathan, and, and you you deal <clears throat> with individuals who have been acting out in, in very broken ways. And probably all of you who have experienced that know that you can't, just trying harder doesn't work. You can't quit simply by trying harder. It's all about getting to the matters of the heart. And uh, you didn't wake up one day deciding to have sexual issues. I didn't wake up one day saying, I'm gonna go to this hotel room with this married ministry leader um, or, or whatever. And those of you who may be struggling with porn, you didn't wake up one day and decide I'm gonna get hooked on this or, or whatever your brand of brokenness is. Something happened to you and you did things in response, some of them knowingly, some of them unknowingly. Mm -hmm. It can often be a challenge, perhaps impossible, to really 
break down the line of where somebody else's fault ends and yours begins and who sinned how much and who has to be forgiven for Jesus offers forgiveness for the, for the whole thing uh, but did you really know that getting into that sexual relationship as a teen would end up causing you the pain that it has did you really have the wherewithal when you were exposed to porn to to say no and and whatever your brand is Jesus is not nearly as concerned with apportioning out blame as he is with inviting you into a process of healing and transformation and looking at what happened to you and what you did in response and that story is so critical remember when he created us with a need for intimacy that's open and and unashamed and as long as you hide you can't experience intimacy you can't experience healing you can't experience disinfection of the shame uh, and, and pain but the physician part of me if a, if a patient has an abscess or a broken leg or, or some other physical problem and they they want me to fix them but they won't you know uncover that part and, and let me see and touch and 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 address it and, and give them treatment they cannot get well it's the same thing with the story mm. everybody has a story and it matters that's why Jesus said you've had five husbands mm -hmm. he said that's your story let's deal with it yeah so let's talk about that a little bit because I think that's one of the biggest barriers to people actually finding freedom and getting help and and seeing seeing the kind of transformation that they would like to see in their lives yeah. um, how do we help people break through that barrier what would you say to the folks out there that are listening because you know sometimes it's easy to listen to a podcast and you've never told anybody your story um how do you how would you encourage somebody to press beyond that barrier of telling their story do it afraid one of the things that sin has brought into our experience is the shame the fear of sharing your story is often connected with that uh, you may be afraid of what you're going to see and feel about yourself it's just going to make me feel worse and why would i want to to go through that process for myself afraid of what others are going to you know think or say or or do maybe you have tried a little bit to share some of your story and it backfired mm. maybe you actually got more harm in trying to do that and if you uncover this and share your story and, and deal with it afraid of what God's gonna say you know is he looking at you saying okay get your act together and then maybe we'll talk all those tapes in your head and I just want to encourage anyone who's feeling any of that uh, do it anyway Mm -hmm. uh, do it afraid um, reach out be thoughtful be prayerful about how and where and with whom you, you share your story I have yet and I have now heard or communicated or talked with in, in some way with thousands of, of individuals who are struggling in this area I have yet to see someone or meet someone who has overcome serious issues in this area who has not shared their story Right. whether it's addiction to porn or whether it's I hate sex because of old sexual trauma or whatever I haven't met anybody who's found true healing and transformation without sharing their story yeah and let's uh, kind of staying in that vein of, of hopefulness about sharing your story um, because I think sometimes when people think about sharing their story they realize that all they can share is what they've experienced to this point and so sometimes that's what feels so scary is it's like, man, everything that I've experienced to this point doesn't have a positive flavor to it. It's like, it's just, it seems like it's all brokenness or it's, it's trauma. Or can you talk about the, the, the beauty of the hope that whatever's been written of your story to this point, there is, there are new chapters that can be written. Can you, can you help mm -hmm. to kind of cast a vision for what healthy yes. sexuality, what, what godly sexuality can look like in a person's life? First of all, in my own story, when God brought my husband into my life, I knew I dealt with the past, but what about the future? I spent six months before my wedding marinating in the Song of Solomon. I knew I had to get that positive picture, not only in my head, but in my heart my wedding night was beautiful my husband and I had a beautiful satisfying relationship during our years together I would never 
have been able to experience that if I had not dealt with my stuff. Mm. Um, in our sex expectations course, and we'll talk about that more in a second. In our sex expectations course, we share on video men and women sharing their stories of their brokenness, but then where they are now, the, the transformation and hope that Jesus brings. It is, it, it, it is amazing. Individuals who have completely shut down, uh, now being open and able to experience honest intimacy in marriage, p uh, people who have just been uh, burdened with sexual trauma or shame because of their own acting out, now being able to minister to others in the same, uh, strugg struggling with the same thing. It, Jesus doesn't only save you from something, he saves you for something and the meaning and joy that comes when you can uh, reach out like that woman from Samaria running into the town, come meet this man, you can do that. Um, the ability to truly experience intimacy, uh, that is something that has really amazed me as I've seen my, my own life, first of all, and, and then now uh, with others. Until you deal with this, uh, there are still walls around your heart. You may take your clothes off your body, but remember you are not experiencing intimacy when there are still walls around your heart. And this is the process to take those walls down around your heart and then intimacy, true intimacy, single or married, in marriage, full intimacy, including sex, then it becomes possible. Without that, it's not, but it does, it becomes possible. Yeah, and that's what I love about the the beauty of God's redemptive uh, call on our lives is that it is not dependent upon some kind of relationship status, you know, whether you're married or single, divorced, whatever, because his call of redemption on our lives is focused on the heart. So he's yes. saying, you know, whatever type of of brokenness has come into your life, whether it was somebody else's brokenness getting dumped into your life in some kind of abusive way. If you're, you know, looking at pornography, if there's been any kind of other sexual brokenness in your life, every person can come to that same fountain of living water that Jesus provides. And that's the good, good news. I, you mentioned earlier, and I'm sure people are maybe even still scratching their heads a little bit. There's, they're probably wondering, what word did she just use? Did she say sexpectations? So yep, can, can you did. share with us what that word is and, and what the course is and everything? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, sexpectations, it kind of it says in one word that we all have expectations in this area and especially around sex. Uh, and it, it's a big deal. It, it's a big deal to God. It's a big deal to, to you. And when I saw so many people struggling in this area, we wanted to create something to help them deal with their story and find the transformation that Jesus has available. So the Sexpectations course, it's a, it's a seven module course with videos. We have some, some teaching from me, but I, I referred to, we also have stories from seven men and women sharing on camera their own brokenness and healing and transformation. The beautiful thing is, in this course, you actually look at your sexual story. And I believe Jesus looks at our story with both honesty and compassion. Mm -hmm. And you do that in this course. Uh, look at your own sexual story with honesty and compassion. And then find the transformation that Jesus has available. We look at some of the beauty of what God intended sex to be, what evil has done to sex, and then just uh, some very, very practical ways where you open up your soul for Jesus to, to get inside it and do his miraculous work. And finally, this isn't a one and done thing. It's developing mm -hmm. a new lifestyle of sexual wholeness, of continued growth, sexual integrity, and, and I love the word wholeness, sexual wholeness. Mm -hmm. And in this course, you create a plan, uh, an escape plan for when you're tempted, if that's part of, of your brokenness, and 
looking at what true intimacy is and how do you move toward that with others and with God, with your spouse if you're married, and dealing with your own heart in all these, uh, in all that, that this process. I am just so thrilled. Uh, first of all, what I know this process has done for me, what I have seen it do for others. And we are hearing responses from people who are going through the Sexpectations course and just finding it a refreshing and uh, both tender and challenging way of dealing with your story and finding the hope and transformation that Jesus offers always. Yeah. Well, Dr. Carroll, I love, I love your passion and I love that you've, you've put this together for people. How, how can folks get um, more information and even enroll in the Sexpectations course? YourSexpectations.com slash Be Broken. We have that special page for, for your listeners here at Be Broken Ministries, and I'm so grateful that you are letting people know about this, Jonathan. YourSexpectations.com slash Be Broken. And I would be thrilled to have you as part of this course. Um, and I, I just want to say, if you care about Be Broken, there's actually some benefit to Be Broken Ministries if you come and, and join this course now as well. YourSexpectations.com slash Be Broken. Yeah, and we will be sure to put that in the in the show notes. But uh, Dr. Carroll, thank you so much for just being open with your own story and being open with your life and then uh, responding to God's call on your life to do this. We are so grateful to have you and all of the resources that you're providing. And we, we look forward to many of our listeners getting help through this course because I think you've nailed it. It's about bringing our story into the presence of Jesus so that he can transform yes. us more and more into his likeness. So thank you for being with us today. Mm, I am honored and pleased. When you bring your story to Jesus, it is transformed. Your story becomes priceless. He can do that for you. Yeah. Well, listeners, please go to yoursexpectations.com slash be broken to learn more about the course and get enrolled in that. Um, we're always grateful that you're with us, and we look forward to seeing you back here again next time on the Pure Sex Radio program. So take care. Mm -hmm.